I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. Guess what? It's almost 2021. Thank you. The sweet, sweet baby legend. Baby. <laughs> Six, no, eight pound, two ounce. Baby legend. He's, April's dog. He's about 12 pounds, five ounces right now. Oh, is he 12 now? He put on like a, the quarantine 15. <laughs> the, the quarantine 15 ounces. I, yeah, 15 ounces. He's definitely push, oh, He's definitely God. pushing 11 pounds. Oh my gosh. I think Perry lost four ounces. <laughs> I've been starving. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm cutting you back on food, buddy. That's not true. Christmas was rough. Um, so this, how was your holidays? Chill. Yeah, it was interesting to say the least. <laughs> it's like a definite strange year and yeah. didn't feel, it didn't feel like a typical holiday and same with like New Year's is approaching and it's still, usually I'm doing something interesting like, yeah. oh, I'm going to a show or I'm going to a party. We're hanging out at my house with four people yeah. that we see all the time already. So. Yeah. I'm just down for whatever. I just don't want to be at my house all alone like, Happy New Year, Legend. <laughs> Eat, here's a ham. I made you. But that's some nice champagne, maybe. Yeah. We'll definitely drink some bubbles. Yes. And oh. ring in the new year. New oh. year, new you. Ooh. We have a lot to say about that in this episode. Yes, uh, But this episode is with a repeat guest that she has been on our Aware podcast two different times. Hedusa, who I also called Head USA, but she's also known as Head Yuza. She's here to talk about the official blowjob handbook volume one. And some people had feedback saying they were disappointed that she didn't s- s- give a lot of applicable tips so when she came back on our podcast sec- for the second time on how to be a cam model yeah she shared a lot of tips and with this one she shares a lot of tips again um so she's definitely took that into account and she's really giving you some tips that you can apply now and she has ebooks if you really want to go and learn more and i just want to give a shout out because not only to hedusa i love you she's awesome but a shout out to you amy amy called me the other day crying and was like Tip, you should read some of these reviews. I may and have had some crying. wine. <laughs> yeah, she had some wine. For sure. I was like, are you drunk right now? What's going on? You're like, no, yeah. I just, I just No, moved. I said, yeah. <laughs> I think you might have said yes, but I was not trying to laugh because you were very moved and you were, it was a happy tears, but yeah. you were like, ah, I just feel so grateful that we are, we're helping people all over the world and it feels so good. So if you want to make Amy cry with <laughs> love again and call me at what, I don't know what time it was. It might have been. It was early. It was like it was six. Like six. Yeah. It was like how long? Have you been and then I was like, "Here's a Christmas for? movie you should watch." Yeah. And I did watch it, and uh, it de- didn't move me to tears like you, but it was nice. I didn't have tears during it. I had oh. tears later, not from that. It was from because we get so we can't even read all the emails to on on air, and sometimes it's just feedback. And the people are like, "I love what you do," and here's some feedback on how you could do better, which we love that as well. But we also get a lot of emails from people that are saying. You changed my life. Before I looked at sex this one way, I was disconnected, or and I, now I'm looking at it a whole different way. I'm having the best sex with myself or other people of my life. And I read these like we get at least a couple of those a week, and I'm like, yeah. just oh my god! And so I was just having this moment. What is great appreciation for you, April, that we are best friends and we get to do this together, and then. We literally are we're we're we do do this in a humble way. Like we're not like we're fucking awesome. We've never and, done it to try to make money or to no, we make money, which is nice, but Yeah, we because we have amazing sponsors that we select yeah. by by hand yeah. and by mouth. By cock and pussy. By cock and balls. <laughs> and it I am super grateful and I think that gratitude is the way to freedom from all sorts of things. So grateful for all of you listeners grateful for you and Amy we, and we also don't want to miss like I think there's in Hakomi the holistic psychotherapy practice that I do um, that I'm a, a student of and an assistant for actually in a training 
We talk about a nourishment barrier where when someone gives you a big compliment and you instantly try to bounce it off of you, like, no, you're amazing. Or like, oh, I have to change the subject. Oh, that's totally what I do. Yeah. And so I think like, it's, it's a powerful practice to take them in so that you, you can really settle within us. Like, wow, we are living our, our purpose and our dream and we're helping people and making the world a better place. And I don't think that that's like bragging. We don't need to brag about it and be like, I'm fucking amazing. I'm better than anyone. We're not better than anyone. But I think it's just a special thing that I'm so happy to I share with you. I have friends now that call me, though. Like, hey, I have a question. I have, like, hemorrhoids. Yeah. What do I do <laughs> we about need to do an episode on sex this. and hemorrhoids? And I was like, I don't know if it's paid full. Like, let me get back to you. And then I texted you. I'm like, hey, we need, we an, need episode. an episode on hemorrhoids if and anyone, sex. Yeah, if anyone has a doctor they, that can come on the show to talk about yeah. this, send them our way. For sure. And I think what the other thing April's going to say is, if... You want to write us some great reviews. One, you can email us to us, but what does even better for us is if you go on iTunes. iTunes, y'all. Just go on iTunes. The review process is fairly easy. You don't have to put some long, drawn-out review unless you like to. Uh, We don't study your grammar, and I gave up reading the reviews and accents. I read that. Oh, yeah. That was I so haven't fun. traveled in so long. I don't even know anyone's accent. You can't Scottish. do Scottish. I can always do Scottish. Yeah. Freedom. Freedom. And I can do some Irish. Yeah, she's good. That's all. We have Irish in her blood, too. Um, okay. So we love you all. <laughs> our listeners are amazing. And you fill up our hearts every day. And uh, lastly, just on the review part, it only helps more people learn and find our podcast because all the review process does is move us up on categories yep. in iTunes. So it's it's not something that we make money on. It's literally so we can help yep. more people it's the message out there. have part be part of the shameless sex revolution. The revolution can you do that in, free, in a Scottish accent. Revolution freedom <laughs> <laughs> Mel Gibson and Braveheart. Maybe we should have a Braveheart night. I'm down. Let's I've been do making lists now of all the vintage movies I want to watch. Were we said vintages before 1989? No, 99. 99. <laughs> Does that mean that we're vintage? We're vintage. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. We are vintage now. Okay, so we have some listener feedback. We have a sex question that I think uh, a lot of people would like to hear about vaginal odor. Um, that is actually very common. Um, and before we dive into all this, we want to give a shout out to one of our favorite things called OMGS. Go to OMGS.com slash shameless to learn more. Does that stand for Oh My God Yes? Yes, it stands for oh OMG. Yes, yes, I yes. knew that. I just wanted to see if you knew the acronym. I, <laughs> I do. <laughs> News. <laughs> Northeast, <laughs> Northeast <laughs> West. <laughs> Wait. Northeast <laughs> West. There, you, almost, you almost got it. Damn you it. Almost got Still it. learning. So OMG. GS is an online program that is research based. What do you say? It's with a couple of thousands. There's thousands, thousands they, of women or Volvo owners. Three thousand different. They're just people. I don't want to say off the street. People apply, <laughs> but they they in the, the tender line of San Francisco. They're real humans. They're not porn stars. They're not actors. They're real humans with real experiences, and they share their techniques for yeah. masturbation. There's internal. There's external. And the folks at OMGS are they're researchers. They're yeah. incredible. And it's amazing. You spend a little bit of money, and you get a lot out of, of it. Different op- options. One of the best. You can learn by listening to a podcast or reading a book. But we are visual learners, so when we teach you a technique, it's so much better or easier to actually watch it and so they have these very tasteful short videos that teach you different techniques so the techniques that you can try at home whether you are already having great orgasms and want to have even better orgasms or orgasms hard for you or you want to learn how to pleasure a vulva definitely go check it out it's changed our lives our listeners lives we should what you know what we should do is try some of their techniques one night not together together we, but i'd be like amy did you try layering which is like indirect pleasure through surrounding the skin Ooh. and then we can talk about our experiences oh my gosh we can be our own research study yeah Oh, yeah. Let's do that. All right. OMG. Shallowing. We have homework. Yes. Shallowing. Some people are like, why is shallowing? Um, so go check it out. OMGS.com slash shameless. You get $5 off and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Some listener feedback. We just did an episode last week uh, with Dr. Nan. First of all, when we put it online, it had an error and it cut off the episode at 30 minutes. So some of you maybe listened to that on act and it was a mistake. We fix it the next day. So um, it should be all fixed on your end if any of you are hearing that. We've got a couple emails from you saying, There's what's some, wrong? It's some gone. tweets. Yeah, we got some tweets. And if you're not following us on Instagram, y'all, check it, Check out Instagram. We just posted on, in the, our first reels. Yes. Reels. We're getting real. We're getting real with our e. And oh. shout out to Paige for we love Paige. helping us with the reels because the Amy and I are 
real slow <laughs> or when it comes to some of the IG we're, we're stuff. Real new. We're real new. And we are doing that means we're vintage. We are vintage. We're analog meets it's a digital. nice way of saying old. Yeah. And it's it's actually great. We we're giving blowjob tips, which is perfect for this episode because we're giving I think we just did five blowjob tips yeah. and, and we're dancing at the same time. Some of which we we're have great dancers. Hadusa. <laughs> yes, we are great dancers. <laughs> And I have the tongue going. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, oh, yeah, the blowjob mouth tongue thing. Yeah, I sent it to one of my friends yesterday. I was like, hey, check out this reels. And she's I'm like, re- what's up with your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> is that a cyst? Like, Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's the blowjob. Oh. Okay, so this is the feedback, though, because on the episode, we talked about cuckolding and hot wifing. We both knew only a little bit about cuckolding, but not a lot about hot wifing. We asked Dr. Nan. She seems like she knew a little bit about the former, not the latter as well. But two of our listeners actually gave some awesome feedback to help clarify because they said that maybe there's some information missing. So one listener says, from what I understand, cuckolding is more about the humiliation aspect of having your wife fuck someone else. She makes sure to tell you about how much better he is, how much bigger he is, etc. Whereas hot wifing is more about being turned on by your, your wife's pleasure and her ability to explore and enjoy others, but completely without the humiliation angle. I, for one, get incredibly turned on when my wife gets hit on or flirts with others, but any hint of humiliation, so that's cuckolding, would kill the mood instantly. That's from one listener. Oh, what about hot wifing? We need to have, so this is, yeah, someone else is like, you need to have a hot wifing episode. This other person I, said, I'm learning about hot wifing myself because it was a term that my friend introduced me to air quotes Air no well <laughs> Legend? I feel, she's more like a sister to me okay but she was uh hooking up with i, I call it catching a d <laughs> she was catching a d and the d that she caught was like talking about hot wifing and i was like tell me more i'm like i do this for a living and i don't know this and yeah. so we, we don't know everything no and then this listener is clarifying which i think is really helpful because we sort of we dipped our toe into hot wifing we want to dip a full foot in so we're looking for a hot wifing expert yeah send us one for sure um that would be awesome another listener says a little clarification what hot wifing is hot wifing is also referred to as wife sharing and in is a lifestyle in which the vulva owning partner is encouraged to have other sexual partners the penis owning partner is turned on by this and may or may not be involved or present as well it differs from cuckolding in that cuckolding is usually about humiliation i think we need to write to wikipedia and have them update their definition to what this listener shared. Yes. That is awesome. Way to use proper nomenclature when it comes to penises and <laughs> vaginas. Well, well done. Very yeah. Very well so done. So you can't hot wife Too if bad you're... we have a mixer with a clapping sound like Joe Rogan. Oh, damn. We need a better editor. That's my job. Amy, Shit. get on it. <laughs> Maybe I could start doing that. No. Um, <laughs> no let's add more time to this podcast. Um, and, and so I'm curious about that. I wonder, hot wifing can't happen if it's two vulva owners in a relationship? And that's your your wife, and you like having your wife. Have I think sex that's with other going people. to evolve eventually. Yeah, if it isn't right now, you could be my hot wife. Oh hey, if anyone wants to fuck April? I'm really turned on by. It. Are you though? Are you? I, don't I am. Know. I love hearing sex stories. Don't you stories. feel like it's going to be like incestuous? It's good. No, incestuous meaning I'm like your sister having sex with other people, and I'm turned on, turned on by it. If I if you're watching. I'd probably be turned on Are by it. I'm a perv. Oh. I have, I've, yeah, I'm a I've, perv. I've listened to so many of my friends have sex. And I'm like, I literally have had a friend having sex in the other room. And there's this air vent in the middle of the rooms. And I literally just went up and put my ear to it for a good 15 minutes and was super turned on. And then later shared it with her. I was like, so I was totally listening to your sex. And I, it was so hot. It was the hottest thing ever. If you think about it, when we were all living in villages and tribes, the tribal communities. You didn't have thick walls. We didn't hear your name. You probably had to share a room with them. You probably had to share one dirt (laughs) dirt floor and mud walls. Everyone was hot wifing all together. (laughs) Banging out in the villages like, yeah, go get it. (laughs) They're all cheering I'd be outside like, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I won't name any names, but we went on a (laughs) trip. April. No. No. (laughs) Went on a trip somewhere tropical with some friends and the walls were paper and two of our friends and the house is really small and two of our friends one of them is very much known you know who this is for having really loud exactly hot is. sex and five she million sounds like orgasms a cat in but she, heat though like, and has like five million <laughs> orgasms yeah je- i'm jealous it's like a cat in heat it's amazing when i hear it and i'm turned on I'm like i want to do that and then my partner's like uh you kind of do sound like that I'm like no 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 one can top that girl anyways uh so she was they were having sex at 8 a.m we're all trying to have coffee in the like, just on the other 
other side of the wall. And uh, they're, all of a sudden, these roosters are outside. And they <laughs> crowing? Yeah. Or, is that crowing? I think it's crowing. Yeah. Yeah. To, to the, to the, her, her orgasms inspire the roosters to get excited. That's pretty awesome. And then we're all in there just trying to be like, well, so how's the coffee? It's great. Uh, <laughs> I'm an audible person when it comes to oh my God. getting turned on. I actually sometimes when I look at porn, I haven't been watching as much porn. FYI still not totally on a cleanse from porn. I'm just taking a break for safety's sake, using my brain fast. And I want to say that the audible parts for me are hotter than actually the visual parts. Me too. Yeah, Yeah. totally. I I like the penis owners audibles more than the girl. I like, I like the, the, if I'm watching straight porn, like in the, the woman, if it feels authentic, if it's like, oh, she's really into it. But, yeah. you know, if it sounds fake and like, ah, this is the best. I love three dicks in my ass at the same time, which someone does. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel you on that. Um, Are you ready for a sex question? Yeah, let's go into a sex Ooh. question part here. Okay. I like this one. I love my girlfriend. We have amazing love, connection, and sex. However, from day one, there has been an odor issue downstairs for her, and I don't think she even knows. She even recently had a pap, and the doctor didn't say anything about it. It's affecting sex a little because I want to go down on her more, but sometimes the scent is way too strong. I I just need to tell her... In the gentlest, most loving way. And I was wondering if you had any ideas or recommendations. Um, I have been this person, by the way. I, this could be a BV thing. Totally. And people who have never had BV or had it diagnosed often have it for a long time and have no idea what it is. Right. Uh, and I actually was one of those humans because I think I got off birth control. I never had BV issues. I don't, I don't want to call it an issue, but, uh, it's a little bit of an issue when it's reoccurring. You're like, what is this? It's reoccurring. And I can, when I can smell and it's not, I don't, mine isn't like the, the fish smell. It's got this more, it's like pungent citrusy. Sometimes it's citrusy. Sometimes it's garlicky. Sometimes it's cheesy smelling like Parmesan. Sometimes it's fishy. Sometimes it just depends on the human. Right. So, and what's happened, what's helped me, you can get that the antibiotic, but I don't like to use the antibiotic. Sometimes they don't even work. And you build up a resistance to it. So you can use a garlic clove, actually. Ooh. It's like, now you taste garlic. Italian food. Yeah. <laughs> you just uh, actually put a string in, like you you thread it through the piece oh, of garlic. So you pull it out easily. And you have to make sure it's, don't take the bulb that's like cased. You yeah, have take to out the- <laughs> take off the casing, because I did that once. Itchy. So I'm making fun of myself. Ow. And then smartest dumb human sometimes I'm like oh yeah that makes sense so you take off that and then string a little thing this is the naturopathic doctor told me to do and that works uh, it's also more of a band-aid the boric acid boric acid don't works so eat well. it don't ingest it do it's not accidentally eat it I've actually used boric acid because I've had BV too off and on and not really anymore do you think you anymore. can kill someone I was thinking about do you think you can kill someone if you put boric acid in your vagina and then and they, they went down yeah I actually used the boric acid suppository you're like I did this well no I, you got one from my friend and she's like make sure no one goes down on you for 24 hours okay because if you eat it it's toxic and actually what was scary for me is i've had it in the pill form i've done this with uh probiotics that i put in my pussy before and when i took it out to uh, put it in my pussy i my brain just said put it in your mouth Whoa. and i put it in my mouth i was like fuck i was supposed to put that in my Did pussy you swallow it well, it's probiotic. Oh, okay. So good. I, so I, but when I use boric acid, I'm like extra cautious. Like, do not put this in your mouth, Amy. And I put it in. And um, so yes, I think you have to be really careful with it. And you can buy boric acid already in the gel capsules, or you can buy it in powder form and buy the gel capsules separately. And I, for some people, it clears BV in one night. Sometimes it takes three or four nights. I use it whenever my pH feels off because sometimes, or even yeast infections, it can help. It's yeah, it's, and it's it's been better with BV now. But I do treat it with the boric acid, and you just do it at night probably yeah two or three days yeah. and usually it'll balance so perhaps this gf that you're talking about you can just recommend that or if she's a listener then you can say hey listen to this episode yeah there's something there and also i'll say that you regular probiotics um i usually i love femdophilus which is specifically designed for va- your vaginal tract that has cleared bv for me as well um, but it's different for everyone depends on the bv douche, don't no douche that can really and a lot of people pH. think bv or a vaginal odor it means someone doesn't take care of themselves they're not, not clean True. And that's that's not true. Sometimes actually you can be too clean and you're actually getting rid of the good flora and bacteria there. So don't look at them as a nasty person who doesn't take care of themselves. I mean, I think the first time I had BV, I had no idea what it was. I had it for like six months. I remember actually someone I, I went out with for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden they didn't want to go out with me anymore. And I later was like, oh, it's because my pussy was so really bad. They just never said anything. They it's stopped calling me. It's a very delicate environment. And, yeah. and obviously the acidity of sperm 
can really fuck with your pH. So yeah. it's, it's, and it's every human is different. So yeah. I think my partner, I think whenever I had the, our flora and fauna wasn't didn't matching. Really match so well. Yeah. yeah so it Whereas was other people, it was fine for you. Totally. Yeah. So it was just a thing that, plus I was using condoms before him. And then I was with my husband. It was never an issue, but I was on birth control. So I felt like my hormones were different. I don't know. Yeah. I've done a lot of investigation into this. And I think if this person, the, uh, the GF of the person that wrote the question, if they try the boric acid thing, they might set, see some, some change. Some and some if shift. that doesn't work, then you can talk to your doctor about antibiotics. And then the, the way April said, you know, one suggestion on how to have this conversation. Another way is to just lovingly, and it's, it's what April calls the shit sandwich, lovingly share with them, one, something positive and an appreciation, followed by the word and, followed by the critique of what you would like dif- done differently or what you're trying to draw attention to. So... Um, you know, I love you and I love the sex we have. I love your pussy. I love going down on you. I love having sex with you. I think your pussy is beautiful. And I just like, I really just want to be all up in it. And sometimes there is this smell that is a little strong and I'm not judging you. I don't think you're dirty. I don't think you're disgusting. Um, and I'm wondering if you're aware of that. And I learned on a podcast about various things that maybe you could look into or try because what I want to do is munch your box for days and that would be really helpful. Um, and I love you so much. This, please don't take this personally. Watch her. She'll get some boric acid in the mic. Okay, go down on me. And then ah, and someone dies. Yeah. Well, we do um, not enjoy this that. waiver here. Yes. We are not responsible. We are for not your responsible death. for that. Okay. <laughs> That's a good question. It's and a great question. And a lot of people can identify with this. A hundred percent. I have actually helped other friends that have had their, the same sort of issues so that many, me too. have talked to, have talked to me about it, and I'm like, "Yo, try this," and it works. So check it out. Are you ready for Hadusa's bio? Hell yeah! Okay, Hadusa Divine is a master oralist, webcam artist, self published author, and content creator. She is a dick sucking expert and author of the Blowjob Handbook, the official webcam handbook, and her latest release, the official Blowjob Handbook Volume Two. Exclusive dick sucking techniques and mind blowing finishing moves. Her goal in sharing her wisdom and experiences from entertainment and educational perspectives is to influence the fellatio and webcam culture as well as for you to learn new techniques and skills so that you are inspired to become your own artist and master oralist. To learn more, visit I am headusa.com. It is I am H E A D U S A dot com. But first Listen up, fellas. 2020 suck balls, and it may have caused you to let yourself go while in quarantine, but our sponsor, Manscaped, is here to help you reboot your balls and bods so you can roll into 2021 feeling clean, fresh, and ready for anything. Manscaped is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming, offering precision-engineered tools for your precious family jewels. It's a new year and time to make sure your boys are refreshed and ready for the new beginnings in 2021. New year, new you. There's no shame in sucking balls, y'all. And that's why we love Manscaped. They put everything you need in their performance package kit to make your family jewels sparkle. So even though 2020 was rough, your balls don't need to be. Your pretty package will love their anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, their testy toning spray, their electric waterproof trimmer, and their weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer. And right now, our listeners get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. That's right. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. Again, 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code SHAMELESS. Happy New Year to your balls. And now it's interview time. All right, everyone, it is interview time. I feel like we've been having a lot of repeat guests, but we have so many awesome guests, that, and they have so many different topics and information to share. Um, this is with Hadusa Divine. I once called her Head USA, um, or she also was like, well, you can also call me Head Yuza, um, but a master oralist, dick sucking expert, and a webcam performer. Um, who has written a number of ebooks and has her latest one out, the official Blowjob Handbook Volume 2, exclusive dick sucking techniques and mind blowing finishing moves. And I, who doesn't want to learn about this unless you don't like dick? But um, I really want to learn about this and I'm so curious about finishing moves, but we will get there in one moment. Finish him. Finish him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was like Mortal Kombat. What was the other one that's Street Fighter 2? Street Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Street Fighter 2 is better than Street Fighter. It's like when you're a, they're about to die 
and they're like, finish him. So this is like, he's about to come. <laughs> okay. Anyways. So we already read your bio in the intro, but if you can, as we always do, and you've done this before on our podcast, if you can start by telling our listeners a little more about yourself and how you got to where you are today, especially in writing the official Blowjump Handbook Volume 2. Gotcha. So hi, Amy. Hi, April. Yet again, thank you so much for having me back on your show. I super appreciate it. So who is Hedusa, right? So in general, I am a jack of all trades when it comes to manifesting consistent financial abundance. I'm really able to blend creative and sexual energies with self-employment and entrepreneurship endeavors that when all combined, mixed together, result in naturally creating, maintaining, and sustaining multiple streams of income that are in flow with one another, which is super important for me. So specifically, I am a master oralist. I am a dick sucking expert. I am a sloppy toppy connoisseur. So I really identify as a muse and source of inspiration, not only for myself, but for others that are impacted by my different creations. So I teach about self-empowerment and becoming your own version of your own master oralist through my eclectic products and services, different blueprints and techniques, as well as exclusive experiences that I've created by practicing this art form. So in addition, I've also authored three different books in 2020 alone, which I've been interviewed on the Shameless platform twice before about. So my first book series is entitled The Official blowjob handbook and I have two different volumes within that series so far volume one is the mind the body the spirit so generally talks about each and then volume two is my exclusive dick sucking techniques and mind-blowing finishing moves where I break down five of my exclusive dick sucking techniques and three of my mind-blowing finishing moves and then the second book series is entitled the official blowjob handbook or the official webcam handbook excuse me And volume one is the webcam creative artist and performer route and perspective. Volume one of that one, April, like, wait, we need to get in the webcam business. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, you do so much. I can't believe that all, all two, no, two of the books. Did the uh, volume one come out in 2020 as well of the dick sucking? Yes. Wow. Um, way, to, way, to way to utilize use, 20, yeah, way to use <laughs> right? 2020 as you that saw that as an opportunity. Author. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. And we're excited about this third offering. And for those folks listening out there, we did have Hadusa on for when she launched her first book and we had great feedback and she is going to share some tips. So stay tuned because she is an expert and master oralist, which brings me to my first question, which is in your opinion, Miss Hadusa, what mm-hmm. makes a master oralist? Got you. Oh, I really had to sit with this question because I was like, what does make a master oralist? So to me, a master oralist involves the synergy of the mind, the body, and the spirit. It is when you have gone within, started your own journey of becoming your own version, and I repeat, your own unique version of a master oralist and have reached a certain level of awakening of sorts and or mastery within the art form. So it's more of an individual and self-actualized journey. You certify yourself and no one certifies you outside of you. Only you know when the time is right. Only you know when you have quote unquote gotten your rites of passage into the realm of mastery. So you'll get this feeling you know, when you have empowered your mind, your body, and your spirit to a certain level that only you intuitively know that you've reached. I also believe it's also when you are able to selflessly and unconditionally satisfy whoever you're engaging with through the art of sucking dick, and perhaps more importantly, also being able to unconditionally satisfy, empower, and love yourself through the art form as well. Mm. I love that you you said that, uh, and I so I was thinking about like in my in my the tra- trajectory of Amy's dick sucking days, right? You know, from from having my very first experience of having my mouth on a cock uh, in my mm, let's say probably around fifteen or something, um, and you not having any idea what I was doing, you not really having confidence in it, not really knowing how to find my own pleasure in it. 
um, sometimes even doing it just to get um, attention or doing it because I thought it was, it was it supposed to do. And it took years for me to really start to make it my own. And I wouldn't even necessarily call it an art form, but I you think you could, you could call it an art form. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to, I don't call myself a dick sucking expert. I'm just, I'm confident in it. And I do, um, mm-hmm. I, I do find ways to um, make it feel authentic and, right. and to find pleasure in giving pleasure. Um, so I think that that's also a really important thing is like, well, I'd like that you said that what's your unique offering and how do you find it as an act of self-love for yourself? And the one thought that came to mind is that book that came out, I forgot how many years ago, it was called Girls and Sex. I don't know if we talked about this in the last episode we did with you, but um, it was, you know, long-standing re- research study that was on how um, young girls aged, you know, 12, 13, uh, they're not having sex at an earlier age than past generations. They're sucking dick at a younger age oh. than earlier generations because it's for often for attention. That's how you're, right. you're cool. That's how you're liked. And it's, so it's coming and that's actually happening at a younger age than it ha- was before. And, you know, I'm not of that generation, but it definitely was a thing of in my generation. And, um, right. and so I'm, you know, of course we don't, we're not like we usually not 12 year olds listening here, but just to inform people, whether your parents or not, that this is, um, you know, something to, to consider, you know, in, whether it's maybe not talking to your kid, your 12 year old about oral sex, but, you know, reminding them that sex is also for them and their pleasure, regardless of their, um, their gender, et cetera. So, okay. But one thing I, so yeah, that's just my little, um, I always have to get on my soapbox a little bit here, but <laughs> what are, you know, our, so our listeners, they love stuff about techniques and things like that. Um, let's talk about positions here. Um, right now I currently have a back injury. So certain, a lot of my go-to dick sucking positions wouldn't apply because it would hurt my back and my neck. Um, what are some of your top favorite dick sucking positions, both for comfort and pleasure and for the giver and the receiver? Like, what do you see in your own experience works best? Got you. So just in general, it's what is comfortable for you. Like I'm all about creating your own experience. I'm not like you have to do A, B, C, X, Y, Z, you know, so it's really just what's comfortable for you as the giver and or receiver and vice versa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some of my faves for comfort and pleasure for the giver and the receiver individually. So I'm just going to go like step by step. So as far as for comfort as the giver, depending on the angle I'm looking to suck dick in, I enjoy laying side by side the most, especially if you really, really mess with the person and you really like them. (laughs) Because it's more of a relaxed position and I can do most techniques in this position. Um, If I'm feeling like I want to do more eye contact during the session, then some of my go-tos are like him laying down, me in front between his legs. It's pretty comfortable. Him standing, me kneeling. If you have bad knees, you know, put some pillows, a blanket underneath. Um, And then also him sitting in a chair, me in front of him on my knees, again, with the knee issue. Um, But if you don't have that, it's cool. So as far as for comfort as the receiver, of course, it's very important that both of us are comfortable when doing this. Um, But I think that it's more so important that the receiver is totally relaxed and totally comfortable. So nothing else is really distracting them from fully concentrating on you sucking their dick. So some of my partner's go-tos are like laying side by side again, him sitting in a chair, me in front on my knees him laying down me in front between his legs um and as far as like for pleasure goes so as far as for pleasure as the giver I love to deeply connect to the receiver while sucking dick and one of the best ways to do this is to be able to have the eye contact again so um the best positions for this include him standing me kneeling him sitting in a chair me in front uh, on my knees and then him laying down me in front between his legs mm. kind of like those are my go-tos if you can't really tell it's kind of like a pattern um but lastly for pleasure as the receiver again I feel like it's about them being totally re- relaxed and solely focusing on their dick being sucked so I think the pleasure aspect for them is the overall experience which also involves different nuances or what I like to call plus ones so some examples are the giver looking into their eyes, uh, massaging and caressing other parts of their body while sucking dick, 
sucking and stimulating different parts of their cock, playing with different temperatures, making different sounds, things like that, you know? So some of my partners go to positions for thoroughly enjoying the overall experience as the receiver are him standing, me kneeling, laying side by side. And when I'm feeling really extra, um, I also like to suck dick in the car. Mm. So like, uh, you know, whether him in the driver's seat, vice versa, and just like, you know, going to town. I like the thrill of it all in the car. Like, obviously, I'm not in the middle of the parking lot just doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like the thrill of it. I like that. There's something about unzipping some pants and having the uh, cock fall out and then doing uh, this and the sound of it. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I think the comfort part is important because especially for the, the giver, because uh, in my experience, what I found is my favorite position for sucking dick is when my partner is on his knees and I'm kind of laying on my side and then I can use a toy at the same time, or he can play with my pussy. So oh. I'm getting turned on and it's like pretty hot. And then I, cause I actually, for me, the, the audibles are really hot and I love like being able to hear like how much pleasure he's receiving. And for right. whatever reason, there seems to be pressure for me. And I'm talking about for me, cause I have some weird stuff behind like cock sucking from right. an, an early age. That, Someone pushing your head. Yeah. Right, 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 stuff right. That yeah. would been on earlier shows, but anyway, not the point. The point is I like to be a little bit distracted and not have like the pressure of like, Oh my God, like, he's is he enjoying this? And sometimes <laughs> it's hot, but like, I, I do like to also be able to, uh, receive a little bit of pleasure. And I know that my current partner does uh, enjoy giving the pleasure at the same time. And then it sort of right. just dissipates. But the the comfort piece, that's why I like it so much because I'm kind of propped up on my elbow and then able to like suck cock at the same time. I can see it and then hear him. And then it's like, and then he's just on his knees and usually it's on the bed and then mm-hmm. everybody's comfortable. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I like one uh one thing that came to mind for me so i won't name names but we but uh, april and i have mutual friends and um i go to burning man with some of them and they like to call because instead of blow jobs you know it's like a job they call it blobbies so it's a hobby but you're but you're oh, into sucking funny. dick and so <laughs> and so they're like you know talking about like having blobby contests which is just so that they're like you know of course it's like the guys are trying to get as many blow jobs as possible but um you know or, or we're at burning man and they're like they're like oh i'm gonna go let's go in the middle of play and get a blobby and because I like that part of you know how can you take away it from be one from being a job you know this is a, right. a thing and oh I'm just I just kind of jumped in with the question mm. that April was about to ask you but two I want well, I let you ask that April but the also the part of just of how distracted we can be when our bodies are uncomfortable and uh, I guess before April asked her question can I ask you this when you're uh-huh. sucking dick are you listening to your body and on and on changing positions often based on what your body tells you um, do you find that you kind of hang out in one position a lot of the time? Like, you know, what does that look like? You're kind of like doing a dance. Like, okay, now my body wants to go here. <laughs> yeah. Or do you also, do you tell them what to do? Like sit down or roll over or yeah, mark like a dog. <laughs> yeah. I don't do that. But, oh, uh, <laughs> April, that's I would say, <laughs> I would say it's more of a flow thing. Like when I suck dick, it's like I get into the zone or I get into like an alternative headspace and I'm not like intoxicated or anything like that I don't have to be but just like getting into that vibe and channeling that innate sexual energy so like I pretty much like use myself as a vessel and then the energy flows through me so it's more of like a vibe it's more of like a free form type of flow um but if I was to answer like as far as like changing positions goes, not necessarily. I don't really change a lot of positions unless like my my arm or like a body part is numb or whatever. But like, I don't really focus on that. No, I don't really change positions a lot. It's pretty much just like I'm in one position, but if it is uncomfortable, then I'm going to verbalize it or just, you know, guide into a new position. But m- mainly I'm mostly in flow. Uh, so you drop into your about. own body and your own... Exactly. Self, like when and you're in their, their energy too. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's good advice. And that, I think that if there's folks out there who aren't as into sucking dick, it might be a little bit intimidating to think I can just drop into my own body and I'm sucking on someone else's body. But I think right. that's great advice if you are able to do that. So I guess on, on top of that wonderful advice, what do you think 
other people out there who don't enjoy sucking dick as much, what could they do to also drop in and authentically suck some cock and get into it? Yeah. Free range cock. <laughs> Free range, grass fed, <laughs> and finish. <laughs> Nine pound, four ounce. Yeah. Cock. <laughs> that is a big ass dick. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> so, well, first and foremost, authentically connecting with yourself, I would say, is the first step. Like, we're kind of conditioned to, like, go outside of ourselves all the time within society. But I am so about connecting with yourself first and foremost. So really going deep into yourself, going internal, going within, really analyzing and assessing the aspects of your mind, your body, and your spirit and how they affect and coexist with one another is very, very important. And these are all key and very necessary, especially when sucking dick. So I would say keep in mind that one aspect is not more or less important than another when it comes to doing this process and embarking on this journey. And I call it a journey because it is a journey and it is done on your own timing. So feel free to go as fast or as slow as you'd like. Now, when it comes to sucking dick, all of these aspects, I would say synergistically work together. And when one or more is off, your approach, your connection, and your performance can all be thrown off as well to the point where you just don't want to do it. You feel defeated. You feel inadequate. So truly asking yourself why you don't enjoy sucking dick and really going within, sitting with yourself, thinking about past experiences, both good and bad and assessing and analyzing what happened, why it happened, how it happened, and how you can heal from that moving forward are ways that you can authentically get into it. So I think just suppressing these things will lead to low self-confidence, lack of self-empowerment, and will just all around put you in a negative space. So remember that most things that manifest physically, they do start out spiritually and mentally first. So that is why going within to connect with your spirit and connect with your mind is very important for you to do. And healing both of these first are more so required before going outside and focusing on the body and physically sucking dick. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast was made possible by Uberloop. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant that enhances sex and intimacy. We receive emails from listeners who have tried Uberloop and the feedback is unanimous. We never knew lube could be this good. It's also less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes, and there are thousands of doctors recommending Uberloop to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks experiencing dryness. Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on my body. And it isn't just for sex. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth before an oral sex session. Totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's beautiful. It looks like a cosmetic product. So I just leave it out on my nightstand totally shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off plus free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by Sakara. If you're like me, you want to feel good about what you put into your body, especially when it comes to sex and what I eat. These days, I have the sex thing down, but sometimes it's hard to find the time to prepare healthy meals that also taste good. With Sakara, you can nourish your body without sacrificing taste. Their organic, ready-to-eat meals are made with powerful plant-based ingredients designed to boost your energy, improve your digestion, and get your skin glowing. The menu of creative chef-crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners changes weekly so you'll never get bored and it's delivered fresh anywhere in the u.s along with delicious meals sakara also has daily wellness essentials like supplements and herbal teas to support your nutrition to boost results try their best-selling metabolism super powder an all-natural remedy for bloating weight gain and fatigue and right now sakara is offering our listeners 20 percent off your first order when you go to sakara.com slash shameless or enter code shameless at checkout that's sakara s-a-k-a-r-a dot com slash shameless to get 20 percent and off your first order, sakara.com slash shameless. And now back to the show. I wanted to say yeah. two really quick things because I think that's awesome uh, advice because it, it can be one 
comment or one human that said something negative about your performance, right? And if you're not a cock owner and you are sucking cock, it can be a little bit intimidating if you've had someone say something. So I think dropping in and really just either communicating that if it is like, hey, I don't know, on some level, this is scary for me. And Mm -hmm. I just, I really, I'm really down for pleasing you at this point. I think it's hot. So let's just work together and tell me what you like. Tell me what, if you don't like something and- Or if I need to like stop because I'm getting triggered. And then the the other piece- too, was just pleasuring yourself at the same time or having your partner pleasure you can also take off some of the pressure or before or you know, before. the pleasure you before so you can get turned on there's so many ways to do it like there's not just one way there and I like what you you're both saying too about um you know if there is this block I think a lot of I was speaking more to like hetero relationships um I think there's that job part and then it becomes this this duty for maintenance and there's these expectations also the expectation that it always has to lead lead to orgasm too right like what can't mm-hmm. we just also suck dick to suck dick yeah. for a little bit to either lead to something else or nothing at all you know and then they're like oh blue balls are like well you got some hands you know there's like or sex toys <laughs> or whatever so i think that's one thing is when we get set on it always happen having to happen a certain way and you, there you get you lose track of the journey and you're trying to get to the goal it can get boring you can get re- build resentment and blocks if it's a job um or right. also those built up resentments like you're saying this if you have a physiological experience that it often is starting or showing that there's an emotional or spiritual some, something or other that needs to be addressed, whether it's within yourself or within your relationship or your partnership. And then once you clear that, that's when we show up with like our clear, authentic selves. And there's just right. more spaciousness there. Right. Um, it's yeah, all I, about releasing and letting go and, you know, holding on to things that you do want to, that, that serve you mm-hmm. and make you better and not necessarily just holding on to you know, trauma or like bad experience and things. I mean, this is like in any aspect of life, you know, outside of sucking dick, but just when it comes to sucking dick, I know that, you know, it's, it's scary for some people. It's intimidating, you know, the, the pressure and all that stuff. I can't suck dick like this porn star. And it's like, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about your own journey. It's about your own experience because I feel like when guys do get their dick sucked, like, it's all about like the environment and the feeling like they can feel when you're not into it. They can feel when you're doing it like a chore, just intuitively, you know? So just making sure your vibe is right. And it doesn't seep into the experience. Like that's why I focus more so on yourself first Mm -hmm. and then you coming to the experience. I think that's, that's, that's so important. Or like in April's experience of, and that's so many people have had where someone's pushing your head and forcing you. Right. And that's something that if you have new partners, you can share, like April was saying, uh, you, this is my history. I want mm-hmm. to be able to drop into this, but I need to share with you that this is the trauma that I have. And here's what I need from and you. And now it's hot when that happens, but it was but you, a but long But you have consent time. now, right? And now it's, yes, exactly. yes. It's totally. You took, you take uh, back the choice. power. Yeah. yeah. By, by. Exactly. Your Anybody homework. out there that's had that experience, you are also capable of taking back the power. So yeah. it just takes time and be gentle with yourself and also communicate and, that. And for people that are listening that are head pushers, check in with your partners before because <laughs> some people might be into it, but you need consent. Just like, you know, if someone's going down on my pussy and I'm just grabbing them and like, rah, rah, you know, <laughs> I'm, which I've totally done before, but it usually we get to a point where it's clear that they're into it. They're like, oh, I want you to like do whatever you want with my, with my body. I'm like, all right. rah, I'm going to grind all, I'm going to hump the shit out of your face. <laughs> right. It's all about consent. Yes. It's all about consent. Exactly. Yeah. So look mm-hmm. back to your, your book. So it breaks down many different techniques and you talk about breath, temperature, speed, neck action, sound, and using your hands. And you have a whole book on this. So we can't talk too much about it, but can you just share a little bit about these key points that you talk about in your techniques? You know, why, what, what, what are they about? Why are they important? Breath, temperature, speed, neck action, sound, and hands. Yes. So in general, I naturally love to create blueprints and systems and guides and shelves and what have you, which allow people to have guidance in a certain area, but at the same time, they, it still allows them the liberty to be able to manifest their own path, their own journey, their own experience when, within what I've created. So this is then tailor-made, it's personalized, it's crafted by each individual for themselves, by themselves, so that they are inspired, they are self-motivated, they are self-empowered to put in the work or the hobby, mm-hmm. and grow into and become the best next level version of themselves. So this is what I've specifically created in regards 
to the art of sucking dick. So in my first volume titled The Mind, the Body, the Spirit, I generally relate dick sucking to each component and establish and set the scene for subsequent volumes. Um, however, in the second volume, which is the exclusive dick sucking techniques and mind blowing finishing moves, I really dive deep into the body component of actually physically sucking dick. So the key points in which you mentioned, some of them like temperature, speed, breath, they're all factors that go into creating an overall experience when sucking dick. So this second volume is really able to speak to people who are at all different levels from beginning to advance. You know, some people have no idea like where to start and some people are skilled, but you know, would like to mix it up a bit. So the techniques are broken down into different parts and different movements. And then amongst the different parts and movements, you are able to choose and select the different factors and components that you want to include in your experience. So really what I've done is create the different choices for you to select from, and it's on you to combine everything the way you want, which then creates your own unique experience. Choose your own about. adventure. Yeah, it's like a exactly. choose your own adventure book. Love it. Exactly. That's yeah, and it's, cool. it's, yes, and it's really like, you know how you go to different restaurants, like, chipotle or like subway and you can choose the different toppings Mm -hmm. and components to your meal so that's pretty much what i've done in volume two with the breakdown of the dick sucking techniques and by you being able to create and select the different parts movements positions temperatures depths what have you this really allows you to embark on creating your own experiences which in turn empower you to become your own version of a master oralist, which can then empower you overall, just generally in life. Love that. So, if, you know, if we we're talking about something, you know, like here's one thing. So um, in the blowjob classes that I've either seen or taught, you know, I talk about like your hands are, are your best friend. So it doesn't have to be always be your mouth. If your mouth gets tired, one, you can just use the mouth on the head or you can use your hands or take a break with your mouth and you use your hands. But so I mean, I'll ask you this question. In, so in, in your book, you don't say, here's the one way. Always use one hand of the balls and one hand of the cock and use this speed and this movement. Right. And, you know, it's, it's here's your option and you choose one what is your authentic expression and then what are you even available for in that moment it's going to be different potentially every time is that is that correct in how your your um your ebook operates yes every experience is a build your own experience so i'm just giving you the choices Mm -hmm. you know because some people don't even know what the choices are they don't know how to like you know just go and like decide what techniques or they might know intuitively but they might not know what it's called so pretty much what I've done is create like names and vocabulary terms for different techniques and different movements and you're like oh okay when you actually see it written out as a word you're like okay I've been doing that but I didn't know it was like that so I'm more of a visual learner I like to you know read and I'm very wise I like to get knowledge and seek knowledge and stuff so like when I am able to see something written out and explained I'm able to embody it more Mm-hmm. me too i'm the same and if you don't have a dick I to could, practice with you could get a dildo and practice all these that's, or a cucumber yeah. that's probably why yeah. i don't have children i think i watched a video in health class when i was 14 and i was like i'm never doing that of a, to my a pussy. Birth? <laughs> of birth. yeah i was like oh my god it's scarred <laughs> like, i want my mom yeah here comes um, the <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so, what, you know, what, what comes to mind when you were speaking on the techniques was, you know, we talk about OMGS all the time, which is techniques for vulva owners or vulva admirers. And this is similar, not as a research base, uh, perhaps, because uh, that is extensive, like wide research, uh, thousands of, thousands people, of yeah. humans, but it mm-hmm. is helpful for folks that uh, don't have either the right, they don't have the parts, so they don't know, or they don't have the experience to uh, explore their own bodies in that way. So you're kind of giving them not only the opportunity to explore and try different things, but you're naming it and then putting your own twist on it. And then it's like suggestive, suggestive, choose your own adventure workbook and handbook so I think that yeah I I think it's it's great people especially since you said you're also a visual learner uh, that Mm -hmm. that's really helpful I need to also have some names I'm like this is the pepper grinder or this (laughs) yeah the the assassinator I don't know with a lot of ass play at the same time the assassin (laughs) 
Lacio <laughs> five point that is Lacio. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you something. We're getting on track, but it's funny. What's new? Um, <laughs> we so we talked about in the beginning. We talked about Street Fighter Two. Okay, Mortal Kombat and finish it. Finish it. Uh, so let's talk about finishing moves because you definitely have some awesome finishing moves to, to share, and we obviously can't share all of them because save it for the book. But can you talk about a few of your signature finishing techniques, please? Yes, of course. So I just want to address like what are finishing moves just Mm -hmm. in case people don't know what they are like super quickly. Um, But to put it simply like finishing moves are they are dick sucking techniques clearly uh, that have been crafted to make the dick actually climax and come during a dick sucking session from you just sucking the dick alone, not having like vaginal sex or any other type of sex. And it's just, you know, you sucking dick and giving head alone. I just want to pinpoint that. So these techniques allow you to guide the dick to and through an excellent climax. So that's how finishing moves are kind of different than just like general dick sucking techniques. Um, But, you know, a couple of my finishing techniques that I've had uh, described in the book Um, The first one that I want to share is slurp till it burps. Mm. And this is a classic move that uses like the mouth and hand simultaneously to glide up and down all parts of the dick. And I see this so much in like, you know, different porn and different uh, performers that do this. And some important components I'd like to highlight about this finishing move are the speed that you go out and the pressure that your hand and your mouth have while doing the move. So like, I like to point out that this technique can be used intermittently throughout the session as well. But when done as a finishing move, you will want to increase the speed to one where you still have control over the hand mouth coordination, as well as you're able to apply a little more pressure so that you're working to come up from the balls through the shaft and then it can spray out the cock. So it's not necessarily because there's another finishing move that's called got milk. It's not like you're actually milking and like massaging it out. It's more of just like the speed and like the, the hand mouth coordination. That's how it's a finishing move. Like you're able to have him reach the peak. Um, I'll save got milk for those who purchased the book. Now I do want to talk about the, the other finishing move I want to talk about is called tip explosion uh, which is strictly done on the tip of the dick, um, which is like the front, the back, around, right underneath the ridge part, whether it's circumcised or not. Um, well, if it's not circumcised, the ridge part is like in the thing, but that's neither here nor there. But oftentimes, you know, I see people just like focusing on the shaft, but we have to keep in mind that most of the sensation is on the tip of the dick. So like some important components I like to highlight about this move are the lubrication or the wetness and the coordination of the mouth and hand while focusing on the tip. So wetness is very key. It's very important because the wetter the dick and your mouth are, the easier your tongue, your lips, your mouth, your hands, if you choose to use your hands, are able to glide around the tip area and if you choose to use your hands which using them isn't required like I like to I like to lick the frenulum which is like the elevated strip on the back of the tip if it's like the the part under your tongue kind of that little webbing exactly yes yes so you know that connects like the pee hole to the rest of the shaft and then I cup that area with one of my hands to massage and stimulate the ridge part of the dick so just like the got milk move um, which I'm going to save, you know, for just a surprise in the book. Um, I strongly suggest just using this one as a finishing move, just because it's really that good. Like you're, he's going to come mm-hmm. when you do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and the other part that I like that you shared that most of the nervings are on the head of the cock, because if one, someone has a gnarly gag reflex, they don't have to, you know, put the entire cock, especially if you're working with a, a longer cock. Um, mm-hmm. and number two, if your jaw gets tired, you can just mm-hmm. use one of these finishing moves just on the head of the, of the cock. And so there's just so, so many ways to do that. I'm sure you could write like volume three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, especially yeah. the more experienced that you get. But I think I that call the frenulum, the clitoris of the penis. Ooh, nice. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Like the, 
Because I have a clitoris. So I'm like, oh, that's what I would compare it to. Except we have 8,000 nerve endings. They only have 4,000. Oh, Sorry. in your face. <laughs> How are the clitoris? Finish her. Finish her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I like, so I, I love just that um, this is so aligned with uh, shameless sex in that we are, you are, are one of our mottos, one of our mini is make your own rules, right? You're, we're here to inspire people. Not that there's one way to do it. We don't know every single way, April and I don't we call ourselves sex experts and, you know, we might be educators, but we're also messengers. And I love that what you're saying is, well, well, like you, you I mean, you know what you're doing. You have a lot of experience. You can write these books, but you're also still teaching people, but you still make your own rules. You still get clear exactly. on you. Let me give you a whole bunch of ideas and you can figure out what works best for you and what you want to apply and go from there and and um and i and i absolutely love that i love your offerings and your messages i love the way that you convey it, it feels very um inclusive it feels very humble and accessible for all people um so can you share i mean we shared a little bit about this in, in the intro but tell our listeners once again and also because you don't only have the ebooks you also have well people you're, you do webcam for your webcam performer how can people find you work with you buy your books etc Yes. So once again, Amy and April, I just want to say I would love to thank you for having me on your show just to authentically speak about this stuff because, you know, your platform is just so just inviting. It's so comforting. It's so fluid. So I really just appreciate that and also your supportive audience. Uh, yet again. And thank you everyone for listening. Mm -hmm. So you can find everything, including my two book series, uh, which again are the official blowjob handbook and official webcam handbook. The link to my OnlyFans. I also do Skype shows. So you can book Skype shows with me. I do virtual BJ education sessions or what do you call it? Blobby hobby. Blobbies. Now, blobbies. blobbies. <laughs> now I said blobby hobby, like hobby lobby, but anyways, yeah, I like, like I like that because now I'm like, oh, it's a job. But anyways, yeah. um, I do like it. virtual. No, they haven't trademarked it yet, so you can have it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I do virtual uh, blobby or BJ education sessions. <laughs> I have clips for sale, my porn hub, and more at IamHedusa.com. That's I as in ice, A as in apple, M as in money, Hedusa, H-E-A, D as in door, USA.com. Mm. Nice. Go check it out. Go do educate. Thank yourself. you, yeah. Miss Hadusa Divine, everyone. And three is my lucky number. So Ooh. I think that this podcast was was great. And you know what? I will definitely. I just went to your website, and that book is very reasonably priced. And I went ahead and uh, took a look at it, and it looks really nice. And I, I'm going to start using some of those techniques later. Ooh, you yeah, let, let me, me know. I'll get my, get my, I'll get my strap on. Now. Yeah, I was. I was. Just, <laughs> I was just looking. Get your strap on. Um, I was just looking at your website too, and it's it's awesome. You have like really good offerings. So go check out iamhedusa.com and. If you want to tip your Hadusa back <laughs> and drink some wine with us, go ahead. Go to marginswine.com. Sip some margins wine. Find out what Amy and I are huge fans. We haven't started a fan page yet for margins wine, but we might. It's on we, our website. We love the San, Ge website. the San Gervais. San I also Gervais love the, the Muscat Blanc. There's also the Chenin Blanc. They have really amazingly boutique wines, women small owned batch, and women owned, women operated. Fantastic creator is Megan Bell, the winemaker. And and it's small batch wine that you can't get anywhere else. So check it out and uh, you won't be disappointed, especially when you can save some money. When you go to our website, if you buy three or more bottles, you can save yourself some money and spend it on, I don't know, coffee or Hadusa's Hadusa's book. books. Hey. Yeah. You, literally, hey. you can literally buy your book for less than some venti frappuccino mocha latte. <laughs> so True. I recommend that. Education is key. So is there is a frappuccino mocha latte? Is I just it? like the way you said it. I don't even know if that's a thing. Mocha. <laughs> Orange mocha frappuccino. Yeah. Is that from Zoolander? Okay, anyways, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for being part of the Shameless Sex Revolution. I invite you right now to go to iTunes and review Shameless Sex. Give us five stars. We love you. Tell us if you love us. We read every single one and we absolutely adore you. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.